you're eventually going to create uh, your own animated film and it doesn't have to be you know an hour long it's gonna be really short I'm still trying to decide on the time but when I've done this for other classes previous semesters I usually had it minimum of 30 seconds you think 30 seconds that's so short it's so easy yes but we'll see as we start to work and you'll have your vision and then you'll see you have a deadline so if you have this amazing idea and you're gonna make a 20 minute animation well, in like two weeks that you have to do it, you might not be able to get that far. So we'll see about the details. But the idea is that eventually you're, you're going to make an animated film, preferably with the character you created in, in Topic 1. So uh, I've brought up briefly here that uh, 12 techniques of animation from the network folder. If you want to look at that again for a moment in the network folder, remember in the Topic 2, Let's see, in Web Design, CIS 126, Topic 2 Handout, uh, I just copied it to my desktop, the 12 Techniques of Animation. This is a, a very short 12-page condensation of what this book is over here. This book goes on to a few hundred pages to really go into detail about these 12 concepts. These 12 concepts are just a little short look at what these ideas are. And we've uh, touched on them a little bit before, and we'll look at a few more. Um, so some of the things we'll be looking at today, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're going to be talking about number two, anticipation, number three, staging, at least. So uh, anticipation is the concept of waiting for something to happen or something has happened and is there like a reaction uh, if uh, the example goes here that the character is going to pick up something very heavy uh, the animation wouldn't be that simply the character picks it up right away the character has to maybe hesitate a moment and maybe try to pick up the thing and it's very heavy so there's that little bit of anticipation trying to do something difficult so that's simply as we will see adding time to our animation, uh, having things pause for effect. And this is one of the things that you will understand more and get better at as you do it. Because you, you'll test your animation. In your mind, you have an idea of what it is. And then when you test it, when you view it, it went too fast. Well, that's just a matter of adding more time, more frames, as we'll see. And then staging is setting a stage, setting a scene so that you have this idea of what's going to happen and it exists in the fictional world you've created of the animate project. So to kind of illustrate a couple of these things, I made a very quick animation. We'll probably do something way better together right now, but let me just play this very simple animation. It has a little bit of sound. Okay, super anticlimactic. But, no. yeah, but think about the ideas that are going on here regarding what I just said. Uh, staging and anticipation. So the staging is that after the title here we've got a scene set in a house. That's simply staging. Where is this happening? By having a moment where we establish, where we set the stage. This is happening in a house. Because if we started right at the living room or whatever, we don't, we can't tell where are we at. Are we in a, an expensive hotel? Are we in a basic house? Uh, are we in a cave? You know, where are we at? So if we first start off with an establishing shot of a house, staging, we set the scene. Anticipation is happening, simply pausing. That could have paused maybe a little bit more. Here there's a pause, mouse, zoom out, cat, really ugly cat, and then it stops. What's going to happen next? That's the anticipation part of it. And then it cuts off the end, question mark. So the staging is how... Uh, the the um, anticipation is how does the camera move around and we'll look at a brand new concept in animate which lets us move around a virtual camera which is pretty new and very cool like a 3d program and that's what I was doing there I was moving around this camera 
you know, moving out across the, the living room. I guess there's an earthquake going on because the carpet's really wavy. And then it moves over, and then it sees the mouse, and then it zooms out, and then it sees the cat, and then it ends. And then, of course, a little music to kind of catch more attention. So out of a very simple animation, we're going to cover some of these concepts of staging and, and anticipation. And um, this will be the more you practice these things, the more they, they, will, they will work. Let me break down this animation briefly, and then we will do something like it. There's, um, there's a, an establishing shot of the title of the animation. This displays for some amount of time. I've got it at 50 frames. I've got this at 24 frames per second as always. So 24 frames per second, this lasts about two seconds. There's a pause of about two seconds. So here is some anticipation. Then there's some music playing. Notice then this, this ends. There's nothing after that. Well, we will see that in anime we can create scenes. Play this part of the animation for a moment and then play a different part of an animation, a different scene. So we will start to see this icon up here, this classic movie clapperboard, which lets us go to different scenes. We can have as many scenes as we want. So scene two, then, is the establishing shot of the house. Uh, this is a house out somewhere with a weird tree and all of that, and so, okay, that pauses also, that's visible for two seconds. 24 frames per second, so 24 times two is about 50, I'm rounding it up. So this is visible for two seconds. Maybe I would have needed three seconds, so that'd be about 75. So a little bit longer. Let's show the house a little bit longer. Then scene three is where most of the action happens. And this is a pretty complex thing happening here, which we'll do in a moment. I've got a layer uh, called cat, and a layer called mouse, and then a layer called camera. This is a special layer that uh, animate will create, you see right here, which is allowing us to actually move sort of a virtual camera around. Zoom in on this, zoom out of that, pan around to look, and because what, the way we draw in animate is with vector graphics behind the scenes, we're able to zoom in and zoom out and keep the quality of the drawings um, in um, in this uh, tool that we will see, the animate. Oops. Okay. So then, uh, what happens is our our view starts off um, at some kind of view like that, and then it animates over. The camera moves over to look at the mouse, and then it moves in close to the mouse. All of those are camera movements. The drawings themselves are not doing anything. I don't have extra frames. The mouse isn't really moving. The camera is moving. And so we'll see how to move this camera around, how to move it at different speeds, because it pauses there for a moment. That's part of the anticipation, too. Camera zooms in. There's a mouse. Let that register for a moment for a few frames. Then the camera moves off to the, to the left. And then there's a cat over there. Things zoom out. And then you see both of the uh, both of the protagonist and antagonist. There's a long pause there, maybe a little too long. I can cut that down, remove a few frames. And then the scene four, which is the end. And that's another basic one. Simple shot, two seconds long. And that is the concepts of staging and anticipation. So we'll create something like that. We have an idea already. One of the parts of the assignment eventually will be uh, to create a storyboard, which is uh, quick drawings of what you want to show in your animation. We'll see that a little later. So any questions at this point? Let's go to, uh, you should be an animate by now, hopefully, and you want to then, uh, we're going to create a new project, 
let's select the ActionScript 3 version instead of Canvas, just because of the, the issues with sound. So once you get Animate open, you want to select an ActionScript 3 format file. And we'll change the size of the project to HD size. So here again, properties of the project, 1920 by 1080. Properties, width of 1920, height of 1080. And then if you're um, if you made it larger like this, it may it may not fit visibly in your in your view over here anymore, so we can change the zoom instead of hundred percent maybe fit in window. That'll zoom out to whatever size it needs. And we'll do a save as. Save it on your flash drive to be safe. And we'll call this just uh, today's date, 2017-03-13, um, scene practice. Basically, you've done this a lot before. Create the file, change the dimensions, save it. So the idea is I want to set the scene. Uh, obviously, you can vary this however you want as we do it. But the idea is I want to set the scene. So maybe I'll do sort of the same thing. I'll draw very simply the outside of a house. So you don't have to be very complex at all here. I'm going to get the brush tool, black color, turn on my pressure sensitivity. I'm going to put the brush size to 10. I like it at 10 with pressure sensitivity. I think it gives me a good amount of line widths and qualities, just draw very simply, like you saw a moment ago, a house or uh, a city or whatever you want. So the ground, a house. Maybe I'll add a chimney this time. Maybe a little tree or something. So obviously at a certain point I would want to make this super polished up. But for the moment, something like that. So I've got a scene. This is uh, the big concept of the of the um, staging uh, technique. So of the twelve techniques, this is one of them to set the stage to already set up a, a concept or a mood. If I'm drawing a nice looking house, we already get a sort of a concept of our movie. If I draw an old haunted house kind of looking house, well, that's a different 
seen already. Uh, if I start off with a scary house and a full moon, that already gives a different concept to the animation. So, staging. Let me just fix my tree right here, and then we'll we'll start. Now, didn't I actually have... Didn't I have something happening before the house? Remember that? I had the title, yeah, I had the title of the of the project. So, we need to have something happen before this happens. No problem. Um, we're going to look at the concept of scenes in Animate. And a scene is basically like an independent timeline. We've had one timeline the whole time that we've been working. We can have different timelines, and we can rearrange them into any order we want. Let's go up to the Window menu, and near the bottom you will see Scene. Move the panel off over here somewhere. We have scene one. We can rename these. I'm going to call scene one uh, house. From your window menu, you can get scene. Double click to rename scene one into house. And then at the bottom, very easily, we have here icons to create a new scene, duplicate everything that's happening in the existing scene, and then delete a scene. So pretty basic. All we need to then is create a new scene, add scene. We'll call this title title of my animation. And the way it's shown here from top to bottom is the order the scenes will take. So that means the house is going to be shown first and then the title, which is wrong. We want the title shown first, then the house. So just arrange, just drag your title <coughs> above the house and the title will show first on all the animations, frames, a thousand frames, whatever, will show first and then automatically it'll go to scene two going to be house. Just drag drag to rearrange title first and then house. Very simply or with the text tool I'm going to get uh, I'm going to draw I, I want to draw it with the I want to do it with the brush tool. I'm going to draw the title of this project, this animation. Oh, we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I'll call this the cat or the mouse. Maybe that would make more sense. The mouse, because the mouse is the hero in the story here. So I'm just going to write the mouse. Right now, this title appears for one twenty-fourth of a, of a second. We're running at 24 frames per second. We have one frame. So this is almost subliminal. It zooms by at 1 24th. I want to display the title for at least one second. So we're seeing down here, it's not in, it's not in time, it's in frames. And sometimes you have to do a little bit of math. Let's say, just to pull up a random number, 7. I want to display this title for seven seconds. I have to think in terms of frames. So I'm going to get the calculator. 24 times 7, 168. I need to go to frame 168 or 170 to give me seven seconds long of visibility for this title. So if you sort of think about in terms of 24 is almost at 25. So if you think about it that way, 100 frames, 24, uh, you know, 25, uh, 50, 75, 100. That's four seconds. So if you kind of round, want to round things up a little bit, or just get the calculator. I need to display this only for two seconds, two and a half seconds. Let's say two and a half. 
So 2.5 would be 2.5 times 24. So to be exact, 60 frames. On frame 60, press F5. F5 extends the current frame. F5 adds more time to the current frame, the current key frame. Frame 1 is a key frame. It's a little black circle. I've drawn something. It's a key frame. And then it's visible for 60 frames, which down here tells me two and a half seconds. I'm going to save that. Let's go up to Control Test. Let's test this for a moment. Control Enter on the keyboard. So the mouse is visible for two and a half seconds. And then the house flickers because it's there for one twenty-fourth of a second in its own timeline. It looks like some subliminal thing happening, doesn't it? So we pause the title for some amount of time, two and a half seconds. Next is time to start to work on the next scene, the house scene. I don't want it to suddenly disappear. And do you see what's happening is, just as always, the animation is looping. It goes back to frame one, scene one. So one thing to be aware of is we can create as many scenes as we want with a length of a, of, of a timeline on each scene as long as we want. And when the final frame of the final scene happens, it automatically loops back to the first frame of the first scene. And they don't need to be called scene one, scene two, whatever. They can be called whatever you want, but they will be in this order. First scene, second scene, X scene, back to scene one. So you can either simply click on your second scene to go to it, or you can use the icon on the top over here of Zoom. This is your edit scene. The icon is one of those classic movie clapper boards that they clap before the, the movie starts. And from this icon, you can jump between scenes as well. I'm on my house scene. What I want to do then is pause the Pause the view here. I want this to display, <coughs> let's say, three seconds. How many frames would I go for that? Well, if we're thinking 25 frames, round it up, 25 times 3, 75. If you want the exact value, 24 times 3, 72. So let's say we'll go to 75. That way the house can be visible for five for, th for three seconds. Go to frame 75, press F5, and that'll have this scene, this frame, this keyframe visible for actually 3.1 seconds. I'm going to save that. Next comes a new scene. We could do all of this in one scene. That's perfectly fine. I find it helpful when I need to animate to think in terms of different scenes. For this amount of frames here, focus on this action. For this amount of frames, focus on a different action. And you can do that with different scenes. If you don't do that, you're going to have like you know a thousand frames for everything in one scene. So if you break it up a little bit by little bit in different scenes, that might work better. Let's create a new scene. In your scene panel here, click the new scene icon. Now, wh whatever scene you've got selected, if you add a new scene, it's going to add it after that scene. So be careful. If I was still on the title scene and I added a new scene, it would add it after title. You want to make sure you're in house scene and then add new. And anyway, if you added it in the wrong spot, it's easy to rearrange. Title scene, house scene, action scene. Let's say this is where the main action will happen. 
These could be called whatever you want, of course. I'm going to to zoom out. In my case, I need to zoom out to 25%. Uh, I want to see the whole frame plus a little bit outside of it. So I'm zooming out a little bit. I'm going to um, call my layer one. I'm going to call it um, background. So a layer called background. Then I'll create a layer called mouse and a layer called cat. For the moment, I'll lock the cat and the mouse layers and make sure you're on frame one background layer. Notice all these are white circles. There are no drawings in any of them. There's no keyframes yet. I'm going to draw a basic uh, indoor shot. I've made a house. So that means I should draw a scene that kind of looks like inside of a house. I didn't draw a scary house, so I shouldn't draw a scary looking inside, probably. Uh, I didn't draw you know, a space station on the previous scene, so I shouldn't make a futuristic scene here. I want to keep following the idea of a basic simple house on scene two into scene three. So just um, another floor. And maybe a table. Draw a table. Maybe actually this time instead of a table, I'm going to draw a like a chest of drawers. So on the right side somewhere. I'm drawing it on the right side because eventually I'm going to move the camera to the right. Right now I'm drawing it in a way that is um, eventually this is the end scene. There's going to be a uh, a drawer, a mouse on this side, a cat on this side. I'm drawing it right now here, and then using the camera in, in Animate, we will be able to, be able to move it around. So um, if you're learning this for the very first time, that's OK. You might make a mistake, but you'll be able to fix it in that uh, it's OK to draw the whole concept first, because then the camera will be able to let us zoom in and out and move around very easily. Sometimes you may think, well, I have to draw it already really, really big before I can work with it. Because it's vector graphics, it doesn't matter. Animate can can scale the graphics pretty easily because they're vector graphics. So I'm going to draw, finish drawing the some kind of drawers right here. And you don't have to get very, very fancy. I know a lot of us want to make it perfect every time, but just for the purposes to learn the concepts, you can do something like that. Part of setting the scene is the details of the scene. If you look at an average room in your own house, think about all the things that are there. This gives me a somewhat OK sense of what's here. Uh, but what if I also put like a window behind the scenes? There was a window in my scene two. I had a couple of windows. So if I'm on the inside of the house, perhaps I should put a window because so I'm on the inside of it now. Or maybe it's a it's a different part of the house. Maybe there's a hallway and there's no window, but maybe there's a painting on the on the wall. painting. And 
and obviously you could spend so much time on this because it, it's really fun. But something like that to set the scene. So some sort of chest of drawers, a floor, something on the wall, a painting. Obviously I bought it all in black and white at the moment. I could still color it later. What we are actually also doing is a different one of these techniques in the in the 12 techniques. We're actually subtly doing the straight ahead versus pose to pose. This one talks about the theory about planning versus non-planning. A straight ahead type of animation is one without planning in that I'm going to start to draw something and set up something, set up an animation, and just go straight ahead with it. Add the next thing that I need as I think about it. The opposite then is pose to pose action. I already have an idea, perhaps with a storyboard, where I've drawn from myself some quick ideas that I want to show this, and then I want to show this, and then I want to show this. So we're kind of doing both right here. I, I, I already showed you an, an example of what we hopefully end up are going to end up with. So we're sort of working with the pose to pose because we have, I want to show this, I want to show that, I want to show this. But if we were doing this brand new, when I was thinking of an idea of what to do to show you these concepts, when I was working on this over the weekend, I was doing it in the straight ahead way. I didn't quite have a plan yet. I was thinking, okay, I want to show scenes, I want to show the camera, let me start to draw some things. I was doing it straight ahead. So there's no right or wrong way to do it, but the big idea is, are you going to plan your animation which is pose to pose, or are you not going to plan, which is straight ahead? And both can give you great results. So, I've set up a scene here. Next I'm going to draw the mouse on the right side. On its own layer, right? Because I've got a background layer for the background, and then I've got a mouse layer for the mouse. So on the mouse layer, I'll draw the mouse. And then on the cat layer, I'll draw some sort of cat. So the one character on the left side of the scene, one character on the right side of the scene. This uh, idea of drawing these little characters, uh, of course, relates to many more of the of the twelve techniques. Uh, depending how you want to spend the time to draw these characters, this relates to um, this relates to uh, solid drawing and appeal. Solid drawing is creating a character that looks solid, that looks believable, that exists within the, the world that you have created. So, you know, that mouse right there, maybe his head's a little too round, but within the world that I'm creating here, is that consistent? 
are the other characters or other mice characters do they have such a round head like that and then the cat different kind of style but still kind of a round head that, are, that I'm giving them that might be a trait that all of the characters in this world that I'm creating exhibit so this is related to the solid drawing and the appeal also I'm mm -hmm. using the brush tool with pressure sensitivity to give me different line qualities it's not all straight simple uh, consistent lines they have different sizes and weights notice here I gave a little bit of the raised fur notice the subtle thickness there compared to these different thinner lines and then the thin lines of the whiskers and then a little thick one right there so this the appeal is one of the hardest ones to teach of course the appeal is is the character interesting appealing do people want to look at it and there's plenty of great animations out there that are just stick figures well what the way those stick figure drawings you've probably seen the what is, what is that animation versus animator that famous animation where the little stick figure guy is fighting against the animator himself and he's creating his own swords and all of that well it's rather the characters are are ugly they're stick figures but the amazing part of it is the actual action that happens and the idea that happens so if you're gonna make characters better than stick figures hopefully they're a little bit more appealing that takes practice that takes drawing on a regular basis that takes coming to our lab and checking out these tablets and just drawing and drawing and getting practice with this if you're not an artist especially if you if you think you don't have artistic ability you can you can get that it's not like some things that you're born with you know some athletes are naturally athletes they're born with a kind of a body for athletics and many other things like music and art that has some innate ability but that can be taught and especially with practice so hopefully you've got some sort of action scene like this with the, um, the cat and the mouse couple more seconds put something together and then we'll look at animating this by moving the camera so the way we would then start to animate this now we have to think in terms of the camera that's what's going to move instead of the characters and I could do both I could have the characters moving as well as the camera to start off simple we're gonna have only the camera moving let's say all of this all of this action um, all of this should take about, I don't know, we'll see, 10 seconds. Everything that I want to show here. Because I already kind of have the idea, because I already did it, I kind of can already give you that it's going to possibly take about 10 seconds. If you're doing this for the first time, you will see yourself how much time should these things take. So actually, let's say we'll start with 5 seconds. So my calculator here, 24 times 5... 120 frames. I need to display all of this stuff for 120 frames. This will all be visible for five seconds. And within the five seconds, I'm going to move the camera around to the right, to the left, all of that. I probably will need more time, but that's okay because we can easily do that. So we need to go to frame 120 and then display, continue to display these keyframes to 120. Here's one way to do it. If I go to frame 120, you could click frame 120 for cat and press F5. Don't do this yet. But you could then go to the next one and F5 and the next one F5. You could do that, and that was pretty fast. The way that I would instead have you do it is you can do that for all three frames at once. Because right now it's just three frames, but if I had 12 frames that I want to manipulate at once, that gets more cumbersome. 
So the way you would do it is on frame 120, if you click and hold and drag, I've selected nothing on frame 120. And now if I press F5, all three of those frames extend to frame 120. So at this point, it doesn't. it's not a big deal to F5 each of them individually. But eventually, it will be more cumbersome. So first select the frames where it's all going to end at. Just click and drag. Be careful, because if you click once and then drag, something else will happen. So I'm going to click somewhere besides frame 20. And then I'm going to click and drag frame 120. Press F5 to extend all three of those frames, all three of those layers. I'm going to lock all the layers now. Three separate layers for three separate elements. All of them has been extended up to five seconds. 24 times 5, 120. <coughs> So Animate 2017 has this tool of a camera. It is a way for us to point the scene at something and then move the camera over, or zoom out, or zoom in, even rotate things. So we sometimes see in movies the camera tilts a little bit at a scene to give you a sense of dread or uneasiness. That's called a Dutch angle. When the camera's perfectly straight, you get a certain sense. But when it's tilted a little bit, everything is tilted on the screen, it makes us feel unbalanced. It's a Dutch angle. And so we have a lot of control of what we can do with this digital camera. We can also, with this digital camera, change things like color-wise and tint-wise to like fade things in. We can use the camera to, to, to fade us into a scene um, to change the color. Um, was it in, uh, remind me, was it in Kill Bill, remember when the bride is having a freak out does, and then there's the alarm playing in the background? Does the scene turn red or is that in my mind? Uh, different scene. It's a different scene. Okay, well, everything turns red, remember? Or, no, everything turns black and white when she kills everyone, the crazy idiot, remember that? So everything turns black and white. Well, in the American version, not the Japanese. In the Japanese version, it's all red and bloody. But in the American version, it's all black and white. So we can change that also in, in animate. We can change like the whole color of the scene and such. The way this works is a couple of ways. We can either, in the timeline here, we can either click the camera icon, or we can click the camera tool. I'll click the camera tool. This creates a new special layer at the very top called camera, the camera icon. I'll go back to frame one. And what we have with this tool, we have some quick controls in the middle here. To zoom in or zoom out. If I move it to the right, it zooms in and left it zooms out, vice versa. I can use that to zoom in and out of my drawing. The stage is still going to be 1920 by 1080. But dragging this over lets me zoom in or zoom out. <coughs> when I'm zoomed in, or at any point, if I instead put my mouse on the scene itself, on the camera layer, I now get a pan. So zooming in, zooming out, and panning is moving the camera left or right. So I'm going to zoom in to some amount. Maybe focus on the side of the house where the mouse is at. And we'll, we'll change.
change it. But the idea here is with this tool, I can zoom in, I can pan left and right, I can then tilt up or down. It's kind of backwards. If I move to the right, the camera moves to the right, which means the scene moves, moves to the left. There's probably a setting in there to, to switch it. Uh, but the idea is I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I've got a camera and I'm moving the camera to the right. Therefore, you are moving to the left. So if I move to the right, my camera, you're moving to the left. So just a little kind of a backwards thing for me. Maybe for you, no problem. But if I move to the right, if I click and drag to the right, the scene moves to the left because the camera is turning to the right. Then eventually we're going to have it turn to the left. There's the cat. And then I'm going to have it zoom out. Uh oh, there's danger. So we'll be able to do all that. We'll have the camera acting. The scene is going to stay the same, but the movement of the camera is going to create the story, going to create the action. So frame one, I'm going to set myself up zoomed in some amount. If you need exact values, check over here properties and other things. I'm zoomed into 126. Yours may be another number, it doesn't matter. I want to zoom in some amount to see the mouse. Actually, my idea is I want to show some part of the scene before any of the critters. So How about you focus on the, uh, the picture and then oh, zoom yeah. out, then move over to the mouse and then zoom in. Sure. Let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to set myself up a little bit, something like that. Depending how everyone drew it, of course, if your elements are too close, it'll be a little trickier. But I drew something like this. Obviously, what's outside of the stage will not be visible. And one way to kind of really hit hit that is that if you turn off clip contents outside, if you turn that off, you, you don't see what is outside. Sometimes that's useful, but usually I have it I have it on. So maybe I'll set up my very first part, my very first shot that we've got um, an establishing shot here to set up a little anticipation. We seem to be inside of the house now. Because a moment ago, we were outside of the house. So probably we're inside. I want to pause this for a moment. I want to um, maybe have it visible for one second. So on the camera layer, frame 24, we'll press this time F6. Because something's going to change now. F5 keeps the current frame visible. Nothing changed. F7 creates a brand new frame to make a completely new change, a new drawing or whatever. And then F6 copies a previous keyframe to make changes to it. We start off with the scene visible for one second, then we're going to start to move. So We'll say that in about another second, the, the scene zooms out um, just enough so that then we start to see the, the mouse on the right side. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to see the mouse, then we'll zoom in to the mouse. So I'm going to say that's going to take another second, maybe more, maybe less. One second to zoom out. So one second later is at about frame uh, 48 close to 50, but 48. And at that point, I'll press F6 and change this to zoom out, pan over, like this. So keyframe, keyframe 2 on frame 24, right? one keyframe two keyframe, three keyframe, and all of this is happening on frames 1, 25, 50, whatever. Second keyframe, my scene is like this. On my third keyframe, 
I've zoomed out to see more, especially the mouse. Right now, it suddenly jumps from here to here. There's no animation. To animate between those two points, similar to what we did with that background, that looping background, between the two keyframes, you want to right click and select Create Classic Tween. So Tween is short for In Between. Animate, the program will fill the things in for you in between, from this keyframe that you made to this keyframe you made. So In Between Animation. And if I scrub the playhead, if I drag the red playhead a little bit, that's what we see. Now it animates for us. There's a one second pause to set the scene. Then there's a one second animation to zoom out to see everything. Next, I want to zoom into the mouse. So we'll start again with one more second. Near the 75, which is actually 72. 24 times 3 is 72. I'm going to find frame 72. F6. I'm taking the previous keyframe of the move of the camera. I'm going to change this frame to zoom in and get closer to the mouse. Let me check my math again. 24 times 3, 72. I'm going to zoom in some amount. zoom I want to animate from the from the zoom out scene into this zoomed in part of the scene so in between the two right click create classic tween so now this goes once it zooms out then it starts to zoom in to the mouse Just out of curiosity to see where we're at, and we'll pause to, to see if everyone's in the right spot. Go ahead and do control test your movie, see what you've got so far. It's not finished, of course, but uh, just kind of test it out. Then we'll pause here if anyone's having a little trouble. Let's see what mine looks like so far. I've got my intro titled visible for a little bit, the house visible for a little bit. Pause. Then we've got that part of the scene. We zoom out, and then we've got the mouse. And that loops automatically. On mine, I think uh, I need to change my my uh, shot a little bit. I see the cat a little too soon for a moment. It might be so subtle it doesn't matter. But I'm going to go back maybe and kind of fix that so that I definitely don't see the cat. That'll be um, changing where the, exactly where the, the keyframes actually change. Let me fix it on mine and then I'll help people if they need it. So at a certain point, somewhere here, that happens. And that has to do with, I should start my animation here more to the left. We'll go back to this part of the scene. Move it a little bit more to the left. I'll move the picture a little more to the left so that the cat is more out of the scene. And I'll see if that fixes it.
So in my case is a little bit of a jump because also I have my first um, I have my first shot is actually slightly different. What I could do is I'm going to show my uh, I'm going to do view rulers so I can set some guides. I'm going to go by the corner of this painting. So you see what's happening. I started to change my camera here, but I should have started to change it here. So I'm setting a guide. This is where I want to start this part of the camera movement. So I should go back to frame one and make sure that the painting is also on that corner. So you see my first keyframe. Oh, actually, that doesn't help because then it moves along with it. Hmm. Okay, here's another way to fix that. So let me show you what I'm let me show you what I'm having trouble with here. Mine, um, the very first shot, um, it's at a certain place, and then I start to change this. Here's how I'm fixing mine. You see, it starts here, and then it jumps right there. I don't want that. I want frame keyframe one to be at the same place as keyframe 2. So here's how you can fix that. You can uh, right click the second keyframe to copy it. Go back to the first keyframe, right click, paste. And what that did was it copied however I had set my camera here, I copied it here. Now it also gets animated, which I don't want, so I can right click and remove that animation. The point of this is I had set my camera at a certain spot. I need to replicate that on the first frame. So right click copy frame, right click paste frame, and then remove, right click remove between. So I don't need an animation from here to there. It won't actually really animate because it's in the same spot. But just to keep it the way it was, no tween between first So now my scene starts off. And wh what you could do as you start to build up a lot of scenes, every time you do control enter, it's going to start to play your movie from the beginning. That's going to be annoying if I've got seven frame, seven scenes up to this point. So do you notice under control menu you have test scene, control alt enter. So I'm going to do that because I want to test only what's happening on third scene not first and second. So control enter is test the whole movie. Control alt enter is test only the scene. So let me pause right there. Anyone need a little help? Camera. 
Right now I've got it very simple that the camera moves from here to there. But I could make the camera move. Right now, you see it's just going directly from here, zoom out like that. I could have made the camera also move somewhere in the middle. So if in between two keyframes where there is an animation, I could press F6 to copy the previous frame. And in between here, um, uh, make a new keyframe so that then I can further move and zoom and reposition so that I know that the camera, instead of kind of zooming out in this direction, moves a little bit more in this direction. Or I need more keyframes. I'll leave it as is, but that's an idea for you to think about. All right, so. The mouse is visible. And this is, again, part of the uh, anticipation. If I quickly now go into another tween and to another camera movement, it's going too fast. And this is the, the problem that beginners always have in animation. In my mind, it plays exactly how I want. In my mind, there's going to be a pause here before anything happens. But when you actually play it, for real, or play it, or show it to people as you're working on it, you're going to get a different result. People don't have it in their minds. They're seeing it for the first time. And therefore, anticipation is very important. Pause. Show something before something happens. And then pause after. Show something after something happens. That gives you the sense of anticipation. Something's about to happen. Something has happened. So before I start to move the camera again, I'm going to pause on the mouse for a moment. I'm on frame 72, and I'm doing very simple one second long pauses. If I wanted half a second pause here, how many frames is that? <clears throat> half a second. Twelve. Twenty-four frames per second. So if we want to do the math, if I want to do half a second times twenty-four frames, twelve. So six seconds is one quarter, or six frames is one quarter of a second. 12 frames, half a second. Uh, 18 frames, three quarters of a second. No, uh, 0.75 times 24. 18, yeah, yeah, 18. And then 24 frames, one second. So I need um, 12 frames. I'm on... 72 plus 12, 84, about 85. So you can round it up or keep it exact. I'll go to frame 84, F6. This causes a half second pause. Show this frame for half a second before something else changes. And now in here, another one second animation. So I'm on uh, 84. 84 plus 24, 108. So at 108, I'll round it up, 110. And 110, this is when the next animation will happen, which is the camera zooms out. And actually, for now it's gonna pan to the left. It's gonna move to the left. Oh, there's a cat over there. Then we'll zoom out to show them both, both the protagonist and antagonist in the field of battle. So we'll say uh, up to 110. Uh, F6. At this point on my camera, I will simply pan over to the left. And move straight to the left. I think I'll also zoom in. Part of staging for this would also be the sizes of the characters. I have a mouse that is similar size to the cat. Well, I'm going to say it's a kitten. But if I wanted to have a big cat, you know, twice the size of the mouse, three times the size of a mouse, that staging right there is 
setting the scene itself, the characters. That's why one of the possible model sheets is a comparison model sheet. You've got one character, and how does that compare with another character? The one character that's bigger than the other, there's already something happening there. That big character, is, is it a big dumb oaf of a character? Is it a gentle giant character? The little one, is it a small sniveling character? Is it a normal sized character compared to the big one? So in my case, I didn't quite plan it. I should have made that cat a little bigger. I still can. I can still get my um, selection tool because it's on its own layer and make the cat itself a little larger, more imposing. I still have all of this manipulation that I can do. this part where I was seeing the mouse also to scale of the drawer. If I zoomed in more, I might not see how big the drawer is, which makes the mouse size different. And then it'll be focused on the cat. So in between, insert classic tween. Test this one scene by itself. Control Alt Enter. see the whole scene. I only had added up to 120 frames, so from 4.5 to 5, that'll be a half second. This uh, is related to when we, when we animated the background, the parallax background. The mountains were moving at a certain speed, and the clouds were moving at a certain speed. The mountain was drawn approximately two times the width of the stage. So a lot had to move across the stage in one second. The clouds relatively moved less distance in the same time. So the clouds seemed to move slower. The more distance you, you move, in the same amount of frames, the faster it looks. The less distance you have to move across in the same amount of frames, the slower it looks. I've only got half a second to work with, and I want to zoom out. It's going to be a very fast zoom, because it's going to take half a second to zoom out from the cat all the way to the whole scene. Maybe I want that. Maybe I want it to be slower, so I need more time. It's going to be the same distance, I need more frames. I'm going to try it like this, simply in half a second, see what it looks like. So on frame 120, F6, and now I'll set myself up that I'm going to zoom out to see the whole scene. the whole scene now obviously I'm doing tweens I want it to go from zoomed into the cat to zoomed out to everything and I have the choice of tweening it or not because it's perfectly legitimate to also do these jump cuts which are that we jump from this to this 
that's also a moving technique. It is, I don't have to have a smooth camera movement all the time. I've been doing smooth camera movements so far. But it could be, for effect, cat, and then suddenly zoom out. Oh, cat is in the same room with the mouse. That could be what I want. I'll check that in a moment, but just for curiosity, I'm going to kind of check it here, zoom out, look at the cat, look at, look at the mouse, and then it zooms out. Now my size of this projector thing is annoying. Also, because the very last scene, I'm showing it for one frame, it disappears. You don't get any sense. I, I definitely do need to add more time at the end. Um, three seconds. So three seconds is 72 frames. And I'm at 120, 789, uh, 192. So I need to display everything up to one, one, 195. 190, whatever. All four of those frames. All four of those layers. I, I, I only see the whole scene for 1 24th of a second. I need to display everything background, cat, mouse, camera for three seconds up to 190. All four of those. Click and drag again, like we did early on. Click and drag those empty frames at 190 and F5 so that it's all visible, and then I'll test the scene. <clears throat> we've got to zoom out, we've got to zoom in, pan over, suddenly change. So you see that idea, it suddenly changes. I might want that. Depending on what I'm trying to create, I might want it to simply change like that but I'll see what it looks like with that zoom that'll probably be interesting too because that'll change so quickly so create classic tween in a short amount of time let's see So that's a different kind of effect there. Uh, and it's going over to the cat, and without any pause, then it zooms out. That's, that's a different effect as well. There's a pause to show the whole scene. Three seconds. I can still obviously tweak a lot of things. We need one more scene. The end. So I think you know where we're going with this. I'm going to save what I've got in my scene panel. I'll create a new scene and call it end. And then write something. Maybe with a different color. And that needs some time right now that if I were to play the whole thing in my mind, it ends here. It stops here in my mind. But when I test it, this is only 1 24th of a second again. So when everything plays and then it goes to the, to the end, it'll blip for 1 24th of a second and back to frame 1. So I want this to display for 5 seconds. 24 times 5, 120. So at frame 120, this is an F5. I don't need to change anything. F6s are usually because I'm going to change something. I'm taking a previous keyframe, and I'm going to change it, so F6. Here, I'm not going to change anything. Just display that message up to 5 seconds, F5. So it stays as is for 5 seconds. Now if I test it, control enter from the beginning,
five seconds, it'll start over. The finishing, the last finishing touch um, will be uh, music. The, uh, the issue with the music, however, is um, we need to talk about music in detail a little later. In that, uh, in in an in an animate project, we can control the music in different ways: when to stop it, when to start it have it continue from scene to scene. But ultimately, we will be exporting this as a movie file, an MP4, an actual video file. And we work with a real video. Some of the cool things that we can do with sound in anime don't quite work. Remember last time we played with sound a little bit, and there were those options of start, stream, uh, and a couple of others. Those really don't work except for stream. So in the example that I showed, the music was playing all the way through because it wasn't an actual MP4 yet. It wasn't a real video. So it's something to keep into in, in mind that we'll see in a moment. But I'm going to add the, the sound as my final, uh, as the final uh, icing on the cake. In the network folder, we should still have the same sound from last time. Yeah, inside of uh, handouts, there's Payday MP3. I'm going to copy Payday MP3 to my desktop or flash drive or whatever. So we can borrow that same sound from last time. I forgot to bring the sound that I used for the, for the, the cat that I showed you earlier. But Payday, that's fine. I'm gonna copy that to the desktop. And then inside of, inside of Animate, we want File, Import to Library. And you should see that payday sound on your desktop. We'll open it. So the sound, it's different than the one that I had shown you earlier. But um, file import to library, the sound, and then we'll see about using it. Remember that sound is in the web design folder, inside of our class folder, inside of topic two handouts. And if you want a whole bunch, hundreds of free sounds, high quality sounds, remember YouTube. Uh, you probably have a YouTube account. If you go to YouTube on a computer and you go to your creator studio, uh, you will then see a bunch of free sounds on the left side under what is it called? Uh, libraries or project libraries or something. There's a bunch of free sounds that we can get off of YouTube. So I got this one off of YouTube. Um, and then I've put it into animate and I'll go back to scene one title. I'll make a new layer. I'll call it music. I like to put music as the very last layer so I can quickly find it. The music. I've got a music um, layer for my sound. If you then click, if you then click on the frame, any frame, frame one, the music layer, you can then set a sound. We have one sound, P1, 
payday and the sync um, set it to start I can see the sound here that there's some silence before it actually starts this is the bigger topic of sound that I should have edited my sound, maybe my fade in, my fade out, when does it start, the length of the sound. Right now the sound's like five minutes long. This whole animation takes place like in 30 seconds. So ideally I might, I should have my sound edited and ready to use in Animate. Uh, but Animate itself has some very basic sound editing features. We won't get into them just yet. But now if I uh, test it, Uh, having the sound synchronized and having it fade out and all of that would be a deeper topic we don't quite have too much time to get into just yet um, I'm gonna save that let me pause right here does everyone have some kind of animation um, we have a sound here we're gonna export it in a moment but I'll pause anyone need any help So every time we do this control enter, we're creating an SWF file, a SWIFT file. Um, this is a classic animate file, back when it was called Flash. This SWIFT file, this is what our final result would be. So I've got my project and a SWIFT file is created in the same folder. So in on my flash drive, I've, I've got today's project. When I test a scene, it creates a Swift file of that scene. And when I do a regular control enter, it creates a Swift file of the whole scene. Swift files were great for like 10 years until really the big decline of classic flash content. Mobile devices had a hard time playing Flash, and the world has moved on to HTML5 and other formats like MP4. So the default here in ActionScript 3 is when we export it, it goes as a Swift, which right here on Windows 7 that we have, it doesn't quite understand what it is. We might not have the Flash plugin, I don't know what. But again, this is an older format, uh, a more universal, compatible format for our movie is a movie format, MP4. So what we'll have to do is we will export as a plain old MP4, then we can upload that to YouTube, we can upload it to Twitter, we can upload it everywhere. Because Swift files, we don't really use them like we used to. So let's say my project is finished. I'll go to File, Export, Video. Now you might say, what's the difference between movie and video? It's very different. The movie is like raw frames, and the video is actually the video with sound. So file, export, video. We're going to render this by default of 1920, 1080, HD size. Check where it's going to go sent off to. Stop exporting. The default is fine. Stop the export when we get to the last frame. The other option is to only export it for a certain amount of time, which you don't use that often. Ignore stage color. This will create a transparent background. We don't really care or want that. I drew a very simple black and white, so we don't really see it. But um, we could have a transparent background, although that's not that useful for video. Um, and then convert video. 
what I've found, um, and I haven't uh, <coughs> explored very, very, very much this latest version. I see it different than the one I've used. Uh, I after we do this export, it's first going to create an MOV file, another kind of movie file. And it looks like in most of the computers that then I tried to view it at, I couldn't view it. So it seems now they also have an extra step here. We're going to export as an MOV file, and then we will fully convert that into other formats in Adobe Media Encoder. So we'll leave that on. And basically, I didn't change anything here. Just make sure you're you're saving it to where you think you're saving it. Notice it'll create an MOV, and then on the next step it'll actually go to the MP4, which is like a YouTube-ready video. Click Export. Depending on the complexity of your, of your animation, depending on your sound, depending on the length of the movie, depending on your computer, depending on your flash drive, this may go fast or it may go slow. So it's taking a little moment on mine. I'm running this off of my flash drive. So that'll finish in a moment, and then what will happen is Adobe Media Encoder will appear. And the purpose of the Media Encoder is to convert this file further into different kinds of video formats. If you're gonna put this on YouTube, there's a setting for that. If you're gonna put it on a, you know, an older phone, there's a setting for that. But the default should work just fine. After mine is done here, we can see what's next. exported just I'm um, gonna wait a moment and the media encoder will load up whenever we deal with this uh, complex video especially the e exporting part this is when you really need a good computer with a lot of RAM and a good CPU and all of that because this always takes takes a while. What's that? I wish me too. Okay, so eventually it exports, we get the media encoder, looks pretty complex, so the defaults are fine. This is saying in what folder are we looking at? What file are we editing or converting? How are we converting it? And what's the result? So all the defaults are just fine. This is a file I just exported. It's going to be converted into some basic MP4 format. That's fine. And then we've simply got play. We've got do it. Go ahead then and further finish the conversion. So this is what I'm saying that it's kind of odd. I remember in the older versions of Flash, that it would go directly to the final final version. But now, from how I've been testing it, it seems that we need this extra conversion. I don't need to change anything here, except for just starting it right there. Start the queue. Click that. Down on the output here, we will see that it's looking through your movie further compressing it. It's going to go into an MP4 format, which is much more online and modern friendly. Eventually that finishes, and then I'll see that there's a status of done, the check mark, 
on my flash drive. I have the original FLA file, the work in progress. I have a couple of Swifts that I was seeing through testing. Then I see the MOV, which is huge. It's 482 megabytes. Wow. And then the actual ready-to-go MP4 is only 6 megabytes. That's a big difference. So that MP4, that's my final version. Play it. And that's playing in the plain old Windows media player. And it's playing in all of that, but I don't I don't hear it. This is that problem that I was saying that in a Swift file, in an animate or flash file, the um, there there are some options that we don't see as a plain old video. For example, sound. I had I added the sound, and it was a um, it was set to to sync as start. When we do this exporting, we actually need stream. So my music started on the first scene, synchronized as start. We need it to be um, stream. The problem here is that stream, the audio plays only as long as the video itself is visible. So this music will play up to this point and cut. So I take a look at it as a temporary swift. And then it stops. Well, no problem. I could add the sound again on my main scene. I could have different sounds on different scenes. Um, but when it loops again from the beginning, it plays again. At our level of knowledge right now, this issue is a little more difficult to kind of work with. But the way I'm going to fix it is I'm not going to have mu this music just yet. So none music just yet. And I'm going to have the main music happening in the in the action. That's when ac some there's actual time here. Um, so a new layer, a new layer of music in my action layer, and in that. I will add the payday and set it to stream. So no, mu in my case, no music in the title, none in the house, but maybe I should have different music here, or maybe the sounds of birds chirping, or some other kind of sound. So this is that uh, pose to pose, or this is the straight ahead style of animation. I didn't quite have a plan, as opposed to the pose to pose, I have a plan. I made a storyboard, and in my notes I wrote, title screen, no music. House scene, birds chirping. Main action, the main music. And then final, the end scene, a different music. That's the planning way to do it, the pose to pose. We're doing it straight ahead. Perhaps not a big of a plan. That's what I want there, so then I'd have to do the, the idea again of doing this export. Wait. Go to action? Yes. What's the music on there? Stream? Or? Stream, yes. Stream is the one that works when we export. So the, any other one works if we're doing something more complex like an interactive project or a game, which we're going to get to that. But if we're doing a plain old movie, stream should work. export video, I'll call it scene practice maybe two, whatever, let that export, and then I'll need to then further convert it in um, the encoder. 
Uh, when I'm done with this in a moment, the way I'm going to take roll is I want to take a quick peek at everyone's animation, and then I'll check you off that you're here. So uh, we'll do that in a moment. But this is exporting because I see a lot of creative people doing creative things, and I'd like to see. This is not any sort of homework, but I'd like to see what you did, and then I'll check you that you're here on the roster. going to do that in a moment. this export I need to remember to go back to the media encoder there's a new file to encode the first one is done this one's ready it's waiting I can just press enter or click the play for that one to convert I have to go back and change my music to stream and then add the music. There is a way with uh, some effort to have the first part of the music streaming for some amount of time, like 10 frames, and then start on the 10th frame on the next scene. Uh, and then that goes for 30 frames. So then on the next scene, start on frame 31 of the music. Uh, you don't have to worry about that just yet, but a way to to do that is to edit is to edit the sound itself. When you've added the sound, you can explore this on your own. You can edit the sound, and there's going to be some basic editing tools there. But it is better to have your sound ready. Flash can or animate can use the sound, but it's better to have your sound ready to use in your project. So let me look at my second version here. It's kind of interesting that it cuts like that because then the end. So I didn't plan it like that, but that's why a storyboard or other script is very useful. All right, so. There's our project. The big idea is that we were looking at some more of these 12 principles. We are looking at the big idea of staging, creating a scene. Where is this going to happen at? What, what world have you created? It could be super simple. It could be complex, but you've created a world. Staging. Anticipation. That's adding time before or after um, some animation or even a still shot to create anticipation before or after. We um, did a little bit of drawing, solid drawing and appeal. Um, how you draw your characters, do they stand out, do they look interesting, that's appeal. Solid drawing, do they look like they are real, like they exist? And we'll do one more little thing, slow in, slow out. Right now, our, our zooms and such are kind of mechanical. They zoom in, they zoom out. One thing for you to play with is very easy to do here. 
if I want some of this animation of these of the camera to kind of animate a little bit at different speeds, what you could do is when you have a tween selected, you have ease and it's set to zero. Animate the camera at a constant pace. You have <coughs> negative and positive values. Basically, you would do negative a uh, hundred or positive a hundred. Zoom, and it says ease out or ease in. This causes the animation to happen at different rates. A positive value, zoom out, uh, slows it down in a different way. Do you see it's very subtle? Let me put that back to zero. On zero, the whole move, the whole scene, that part moves straight, mechanical. But when I've got it set to ease out, it goes out of the animation slowly. It eases out of the animation slowly. So if you see it here, I pull this across. As we're leaving the animation, it slows down. Let me play it this way. It's very subtle. See, it's going to zoom out. You see it zoomed out and slowly stopped as it zoomed out. It's, it's smoother, yes. You can simply get a lot of great results simply by changing all of these to either ease out or ease in. Ease in is the opposite in that it starts off fast. And then, uh, no, the opposite. It starts off uh, slow and goes faster. Ease out. I always get them... Uh, mixed up but on that one you see that one is slow and fast and you have any any amount in between a 25 or a negative 75 or a 72 but usually this is going to work best out of full 100 or full negative 100 you can go in and further edit this but that's that's the ease in and ease out of the technique I I mentioned it very quickly, but check the, the handout here. And that's basically slow in and slow out. Things in animation appear more realistic when there is some amount of slowing as something happens or speeding up as something happens. Uh, so the camera might not move mechanically all the time. The camera starts off slow and gets fast. Or the camera is moving at a certain space and then it gets slow. So play with either ease in or ease out. optional book of the Tradigital tra animation. This is the one optional that uh, has all of these techniques in a lot of detail. You can get books at our library also on animation. That'll be it for the moment. I'm going to put a copy of my animation in the folder in case you need an example of it. Remember, review the video if you need it. Uh, I'm going to kind of go up and down the rows and just take a quick look at people's animation and then I'll mark you that you're here today and then it'll be time to to practice there's nothing to turn in yet but I would recommend that you practice the things we talked about today